pagdiriwang sa pagpapakasakit ng Panginoon. Sa araw na ito, walang misa na ginaganap kundi ang paggunita sa pagpapakasakit ng Panginoon. Pinagninilayan ng bayan ng Diyos ang pagpapakasakit at pagkamatay ng ating Panginoong Hesus sa krus. Sa araw ding ito, itinatampok at pinararangalan ang banal na krus sa pamamagitan ng pagluhod at paghalik bilang pag-alala sa kamatayang dinanas ng ating Panginoong nagdulot ng kaligtasan. Bagamat walang misa, ang banal na komunyon na tatanggapin ng sambayanan ay mula sa misa ng huling hapunan na siyang ipinagdiwang kahapon. Ang pagdiriwang ay nahahati sa tatlong bahagi. Ang unang bahagi ay ang liturhiya ng salita ng Diyos, sa kung saan, Pinapakinggan at pinagninilayan ng sambayanan ang pagpapakasakit at pagkamatay ni Jesus ayon sa banal na kasulatan. Winawakasan ang bahaging ito ng mga panalangin pangkalahatan sa kung saan ipinagdadasal ang mga ilang natatanging kahilingan ng buong simbahan. Sa ikalawang bahagi ay ang pagpaparangal sa krus kung saan tinatanggalan ng tabing at ipinapakita ang krus upang maparangalan ng buong sambayanan. Karaniwan ang paghalik at pagluhod sa krus, tanda ng paggalang at pagsamba sa banal na krus ni Jesus. At ang huling bahagi ay ang pakikinabang o ang pagtanggap ng banal na komunyon. Natatangi rin sa araw na ito ang pagdapa ng pari sa harap ng altar sa panimula ng pagdiriwang. Ang pagdapa ng pari ay tinatawag sa Griego na proskinesis at dito ay sinabi ng manunulat na si Ameliana ng Luer, Anumang gawin natin ay magdadagdag lamang sa ating pag-insulto at pasakit ng Panginoon. Hindi na natin maibuka ang ating mga kamay sapagkat siya ay ating sinampal at pinutungan ng koronang tinik. Hindi natin mahalikan ang altar sapagkat siya ay hinalikan bilang pagkakanulo. Hindi tayo makapagsalita sapagkat siya ay ating inalipusta at inalimura. Kaya wala nang natitira kung hindi ang tayo'y dumapa at tumahimik na lamang at humingi ng tawad sa ating mga kasalanan. Banal na Triduo, Monsignor Andres Valera Please stand.
Please kneel. Please stand. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations because of him Kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned and we held him in no esteem. Yet, it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as his chicken, and one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced from our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evil doers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. 
But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and he and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands, I command my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. My trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, 
but one who is similarly being tested in every way, yet without sin. So, let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, He offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Masunuring Kristong Jesus na kain ng buhay sa krus kaya pinakila ng Dios minigyan na. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John Jesus went out with His disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which He and His disciples entered. Judas, His betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with His disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene! He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. And so, if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its cupboard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest 
and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I have said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken right, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose Peter ear had cut off and said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die, so Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, I say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. 
Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas! Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priest and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him, so Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you, have, you would have no power over me if I, it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who it will be. In order that the passage of the scripture might be fulfilled that says, 
they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in a wine on a sprig of high school and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit. Please me. Please stand. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one, who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lanes into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial clothes along with the spices according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where we had been crucified, there was a garden, and in a garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated.
Ito po ang mahal na araw. Mahal dahil sa nakatoon ng ating atensyon sa ating mahal na Panginoong Hesus. Mahal dahil sa ganoon na lang tayo kamahal ng Diyos na ibinigay niya ang kanyang bultong na anak upang tayo ay hindi mapahamak kundi magkaroon ng buhay. Mahal kasi ganoon kamahal ang ating kaligtasan na ang dugo ng ating Panginoon ang itinubos para sa atin. Isaiah said, He was pierced for our sins, crushed for our iniquity. He bore the punishment that makes us whole. By His wounds, we were healed. Ang diwa natin ngayon ay lungkot. Nalulungkot tayo sa nangyari kay Jesus. Nalulungkot din tayo sa ating kasalanan na nagdadala ng ganyang pahirap hindi lang kay Jesus kundi sa ating kapwa-tao. Pero sana ang lungkot natin ay sinasamahan ng malaking pasasalamat. Iyon ay ginawa niya para sa atin. Yan ang pinakatanda na mahal na mahal niya tayo. Ang hamon sa atin na hindi masayang ang kanyang ginawa para sa atin. Sana ito ay lubos na mapakinabangan natin at magbunga ng pagbabago sa atin. Sana ang sinasadyang pahirap sa kapwa ay tumigil na. Pagkatapos ng humiliya, tayo ay magpaparangal sa krus. Hindi kayo makakapunta sa simbahan para halikan si Yesus na nakapako sa krus. Pero may mga krusifikses naman tayo sa inyong mga bahay. Huwag kayong mahiya na isa-isang lumapit sa krus, lumuhod sa krus sa inyong mga tahanan. Hipuin ang krus, yakapin ang krus ng buong pagmamahal at pasasalamat sa Panginoon. Let us bear witness by these simple gestures to the members of our family that we accept the sacrifice of Jesus. Ang krus na isang instrumento ng pagpapakasakit ay ginawa ng instrumento ng pagmamahal dahil tinanggap ito ni Jesus para sa atin. Ang krus na nagdadala ng kamatayan ay nagdala sa atin ng buhay ng katubusan. Namatay siya upang tayo'y mabuhay And the rest of the day, until tomorrow, you can light a candle in front of the crucifix and spend some time in meditation in front of the crucifix. Allow the cross of Jesus to speak to you. Ang krus ay isang aklat na maraming sasabihin sa atin. Let us spend some time just to look at it with love. The prophet Isaiah wrote, Because he surrendered himself to death, he was counted among the transgressors. He bore the sins of many and interceded for the transgressors. We now have a powerful intercessor in Jesus. Dahil sa kanyang pakikisa sa atin, siya ay isang tagapamagitan na nakauunawa sa atin. Kaya susundan natin ang pagpaparangal sa atin ng krus kasama ng paparangal sa krus, ang mahabang panalangin ng bayan. Ito ay isang orihinal na prayer of the faithful. 
dito ipinagdarasal natin sa Diyos, sa ngalan ni Jesus, ang lahat ng mga mananampalataya, ang lahat ng tao, at ang lahat ng pangangailangan sa mundo. Let us be intercessors together with Jesus. Taimtim nating sabayan ang mga dasal na ito. At samahan natin ang pagsasamo sa Diyos. Magtatapos ang pagdiriwang sa pagbibigay ng komunyon. Ang komunyon na kinonsecrate kahapon kasi ngayong araw ay walang misa. Kayong nga sa bahay, sumabay kayo sa banal na komunyon sa inyong spiritual communion. Really desire with all your heart to receive Jesus in your soul. Allow Him to enter into you. Ang pagpapakasakit at pagkamatay ng Panginoon ay nagpapakita na talagang Siya ay nakikiisa sa ating kalagayan bilang mga tao. Noong Christmas, sinabi natin na Siya ang Emmanuel, ang Diyos na suma sa atin. Hindi lang tayo sinasamahan ng Diyos, talagang nakiisa Siya sa atin at pati na sa ating kahirapan hanggang sa ating kamatayan. Kahit na Siya ay anak ng Diyos, natuto Siya sa pamamagitan ng Kanyang pagdurusa at dito Siya naging ganap. Sinabi sa atin sa ikalawang pagbasa, He was made perfect through His suffering. Bilang tagapamagitan natin, alam niya ang ating kalagayan. Dinaanan niya ang maraming pasakit na tayo nga sa awa ng Diyos ay hindi natin natikman. Alam niya ang sakit sa dibdib ng isang pinagtraiduran, ng pinagkakatiwalaan. Naranasan niya ang kasinungalingan ng mga paratang laban sa kanya. He endured grave physical torture and he was even physically totally exhausted. Naging biktima siya ng isang leader na walang paninindigan at nagpapadala lamang sa sigaw ng mga tao. Kahit na siya ay nakapako na sa krus, nandyan pa rin ang pagkukutya sa kanya. Talagang niyorakan ang kanyang dignidad bilang tao. Dumugo din ang puso niya nang makita niya na ang kanyang mahal na ina ay nagdurusa dahil sa kanya. Nalungkot din siya sa paglayo ng kanyang mga alagad. Mga alagad na kanyang inalagaan sa loob ng tatlong taon. Itong lahat ay dinanas niya. Talagang nakiisa siya sa mga kahirapan at pasakit sa mga tao. Kaya hindi natin masasabi na hindi niya alam ang kalagayan at kahirapan natin. At dahil dito, makakatawag tayo sa Kanya. Nakakasigurado tayong mauunawaan niya tayo ano man ang ating kalagayan. Ngayong panahon ng pandemya, talagang hirap tayo. Matagal na tayong nakakulong sa ating mga bahay. Mabuti na lang kung maluwag ang ating mga tahanan. Hindi natin alam hanggang kailan pa ito. Marami ang nangwawala na ng hanap buhay. Marami nakakaranas na ng gutom. Walang kasiguraduhan ang kinabukasan natin. Pero mga kapatid, huwag tayong mawala ng pag-asa. Kumapit tayo ngayon sa Diyos na patuloy na nagmamahal sa atin. Ito po ang mensahe ng mahal na araw. Isama natin ang ating mga nararanasang kahirapan, pagkainis, pagkagalit at takot 
sa krus ni Jesus. Ialay natin kay Jesus at humingi tayo na ipanalangin niya tayo na tayo ay manatiling matatag sa kahirapan na naranasan natin sa ating panahon ngayon. Kailangan natin ng assurance ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Kaya ulitin natin ang ating dasal sa simula ng ating pagdiriwang. Father, look with love upon your people. The love which our Lord Jesus Christ showed us when He delivered Himself to evil men and suffered the agony of the cross. Ang araw na ito ay hindi lang tungkol sa kahirapan, kundi tungkol sa pag-ibig kahit na sa gitna ng kahirapan. Kaya habang tinitingnan natin ang krus, hindi lang tayo nalulungkot kay Jesus, tayo ay nagpapasalamat. Ganon kalaki ang kanyang pag-ibig sa atin. Kaya ito po'y isang asyuran sa atin na hindi tayo pababayaan ng Diyos. At sana, magalit din tayo sa mga pagpapakasakit na ginagawa ng tao sa kanyang kapwa-tao. Dinanas ito ni Jesus. Kaya nagkahalo na po ang lungkot, ang galit, ang pasasalamat. Lungkot sa kahirapan ni Jesus, galit sa kasamaan ng kasalanan, sa kasamaan ng tao sa kanyang kapwa-tao, at pasasalamat, assurance, pag-asa na ang Diyos ay talagang para sa atin, hindi niya tayo iiwan. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Cristo, kaisuma sa mo sa yo, kusama ng mga tao. Binigyan ka, kahilingan namin ito. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Pope. Let us pray also for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church to govern the holy people of God. O 
Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For all orders and degrees of the faithful, let us also pray for our apostolic administrator, Broderick, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Kaisani. Kami sumasa mo sa iyo, Diyos ama ng mga tao. Pakiusap ay dinggin mo, kahilingan namin ito. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers. By the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For catechumens, let us also pray for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of His mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Sumasamo sa iyo, Diyos ama ng mga tao, pakiusap ay dinggin mo, kahilingan namin ito. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in His one church. Sama ng mga tao, pakiusap ay dinggin mo, kahilingan namin ito. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered, and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people, let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, 
that He may grant them to advance in love of His name and in faithfulness to His covenant. Kami sumasamo sa iyo, Diyos Ama ng mga tao. Pakiusap ay tingkin mo, kahilingan namin ito. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, hear graciously the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that those who do not confess Christ, that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God Himself. Kami sumasamo sa iyo, Diyos Ama ng mga tao. Pakiusap ay linggin mo, kahilingan namin ito. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to His will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Kaisa ni Yesu Cristo, kami sumasamo sa iyo, Diyos ama ng mga tao. Pakiusap ay dinggin mo,
Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of people, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that He may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Kaisan ni Jesu Cristo, kami sumasamo sa iyo. Dios ama na mga tao. Pakiusap ay bingkin mo, kahili Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For an end to the pandemic, let us pray, dearly beloved, for a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health, and healing, look with compassion on our world, brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that assail us, and in your fatherly providence, grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those working to eradicate this curse through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sa kahoy ng krus na banal, ni Jesus na poong mahal, na lupigang kamatayan, at sa muling pagkabuhay, ang pag-asa ay suminay.
let us kneel. Let us stand. Sa kahoy ng krus na banal ni Jesus na poong mahal na lupigang kamatayan at sa muling pagkabuhay ang pag-asa ay sumilay. Purihin at ipagdangwan ang ating poong may kapal Ama na po Let us kneel. Let us stand. Sa kahoy ng krus na banal ni Jesus na poong mahal na lupigang kamatayan at sa muling pagkabuhay ang pag-asa ay sumilay Purihin at ipagdangal ang ating po Let us kneel.
let us stand.
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>